race weekend of the BMW IBS M Bobsay and Skeleton World Cup in Winterberg in Germany's Hochsauerland, just to the east of the industrial heartland of the Ruhr Valley. Martin Haven and Greg West ready to call the action from the second and deciding heat of our men's skeleton competition. Our field of 30 cut to 20, and at the top of the pile, Greg, some familiar names in the fray. Yeah, sitting in bronze right now, Nikita Tregibov. Uh, definitely somebody that we've seen up there on multiple occasions. And he's in the middle of that fight, all the way back to, I think, about eighth place, that are all within a tenth of a second. There is going to be a battle for the bronze medal position in the second heat. And sitting in silver right now with a pretty comfortable lead. We've seen him many times before. Best mustache in the skeleton tour, Axel Jung. He's got a pretty solid position there in second with a 55-67. Good start, good drive, knows the track well. But uh, the leader, the, uh, the ageless wonder that is Alexander Trechikov, the Russian rocket. Big start from him, and then he improved it on the way down the track. He's won here on so many different occasions, and uh, yeah, he has a, a, a big 1,500 to the second lead going into heat number two. He took his first win on this track 15 years ago, Alexander Chechikov, and every race winner in the intervening period is still competing, with the single exception of Florian Gressel, who's now an IBSF jury member. Mind you, that is only three people. <laughs> so only in the last 16 outings now have Alexander Chetikov, Sun Bin Young, or Martin Stukurs won in Winterberg, with the exception of Gressel in 2008-9. So it is a very well-known track by our most experienced athletes. And the fastest 20 will go in reverse order of the second heat as ever. Both runs count. Total time decides winners, losers, and also rams. Air hovering around minus one. It's a pretty dampened, misty weekend. And that means the refrigeration is on hard and the track. Well, we got quite close to track record pace in the first heat. We might possibly get close in the second. Let's wait and see what they've got. If it speeds up a little, if the sun came out, then we would be busting track records. But I think if you're in Winterberg, Greg, you're just glad it's not raining, right? Yeah, you know, Winterberg's uh, pseudonym is Waterberg. We've been there on many occasions where the track was basically flooded. But uh, yeah, there, there is a cloudy uh, cloudiness to the air as, as well as to the ice. So we'll see what the fresh spritz or spray of water on the ice can bring some big speed for the second heat. And uh, Vladislav, uh, Vladislav Hershevich, I can't say that even though I know him well. Uh, he's going <laughs> to kick it off for us. I need more coffee, Martins. It's early. It's 5.48 a.m. on the East Coast. Well, there you go. <laughs> Fourth race of the BMW IBSF Men's Skeleton World Cup. We're in Winterberg in Germany. Top 20 sliders from the first heat go in reverse order in the second. Martin Haven and Greg West watching the action. Vladislav Heroskevich of the Ukraine makes the cut here. His best result here two years ago, 11th place, 20th after the first heat. Vlad looking to move up, 4.99, so he does improve on his start time. Anything under five seconds is in this you know, ever-increasing skill field is, is a good thing. So we'll see here what the ice is doing after the sprints. He's setting the pace for us. Pretty solid run in the first heat, but he's left a little bit of time on the start ramp. And coming through the upper third of the track, very important, it is so flat. Turns three through five here, that even the smallest mistake really doubles down on itself. Nice looking line through the Chrysler, nice and flat. You do not want to see waves there. This is where the bottom drops out if you weren't watching the first heat. Turn nine, all of a sudden, the floor drops out, you really start cooking. You go from about 40 miles an hour to 80 miles an hour real quick, and then up 65 feet for turn 14 and the finish curve. 56-3-7, 56-65 in the first heat, so nearly three-tenths of a second better. Well, that's probably more like the run he was hoping for in the first heat. Should be knocking on the door of the top ten, not just scraping into the race. Mind you, a third of our athletes didn't even manage to scrape into the race, so getting that second run is really important. 
I think it's a better run from Vlad. I also think he got some clean ice, which uh, always helps. Much better start time. And just look more relaxed down the track. We saw him there in turn 11. Nice bullet form. Nice looking helmet too this year. Way to, way to come out with helmet Olympic year. Exactly. Loads of kids down there in the finish area on a day out from school watching the action. Second up is Chen Wenhao of China, 20th of our 30 starters. And like Vladislav, probably didn't have the best of the ice in the first heat. Chen, 24 years old. It's his first ever World Cup on this track. He's only actually raced here once before, twice before, in 2018 and 2019. Chen with a huge start, tied to the second fastest start in uh, Heat 1 with a 481. We'll see what he does comparatively here. 484, good looking start again. Got a quarter second in the bank, coming through turn zero and no drama. So he maintains that speed. And if he just needs to point it straight and let it fly to hold on to the, the, the top spot. No drama again, exit in turn four. Real skeleton, run fast, lie down, win. You know, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> from the Willie Schneider School of Skeleton. I'm seeing some toes from Chen now. Saw toes in turn four, you don't want them there. Saw toes in the Kreisel, you don't want them there. Dino so, you know, in the X to nine, you might want them there. Again, turn 11, a little bit of toe action. And then, uh, yeah, he looks like he's a little bit loose. The time's coming back down. Three tenths up, big waves in turn 14. 1,200, so it came back a lot. Vlad had a pretty yes, good run. Yes, it did. Well, he was 900 up from the first heat, only added 300, so he had a slightly better run. Vlad had a slightly better run. But Chen Wenhao keeps his nose in front. 1,200s in a second. We keep talking about that as if it's a lifetime, Greg. It's the tiniest margins. We see him here at the top third of the track. See that little toe, this is good for coming from eight to nine. You definitely do not want toes there. Our goal here is to build speed and that costs you speed. We see him here in turn 11, nice looking bullet form, but watch his feet, he doesn't trust it. He's got the right toe down on the ice to help turn, turn the sled. It's so subtle down there, but it makes a huge difference. Chen Wen Hao doing the high five run. He's, he's learning fast, isn't he? He's our race leader as we get to the third of our 20 athletes. Sammy Meyer, 27th of 30 out of the starting shed. Really didn't have too much ice to work with. Eight hundreds of a second, the advantage over Chen Wen Hao. His other advantage is that he's done a couple more World Cup races on this track. This is his third World Cup start here. 509 in the first heat, 518 in the second. That is not going to help. Now, the good news is he had a drama-free co uh, corner zero. So he, did, he didn't double down on it, but drops back a tenth of a second off his first heat start time in a stacked field. So he's got work to do. Sitting in third right now. He's a half second back on the Chinese athlete. But he's got the fastest speed so far of the heat into the Chrysler, 93.8. As you're watching the heats, watching that speed through the Chrysler there, which is the, I guess, a 270 degree corner on this track, really will tell you what's going to happen at the bottom. Fastest speed again, clawing it back, back up to second, three tenths back. Fastest speed of the heat, 130.3, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It is not. Chen's going to hold on for another, another sled. Well, 900 there at the start, 1600s behind at the bottom, plus the loss of the 800s he had from the first heat. He just saw a little shrug of the shoulders from Jeff Payne, the coach. Well, I mean, not the many run's major pretty errors. good. Yeah. But you can't, 518, you cannot do that in this field. You just cannot do it. If he would have done that in the first heat, he wouldn't have made the cut. The run's beautiful. Great looking run uh, from Sammy Meyer. I, I really, I would be really nitpicky to, to take any of it apart. Exit turn 13, we've seen that flop. Uh, everybody that was fast did that. That's the way the ice is cut. Maybe a little bump there, but the damage was done in the first 50 meters. Yeah, if you don't have the speed, you can't make it, unless you're German. Next up, Ronnie Ardeset <laughs> of Switzerland. Biggest, second biggest set of quads, perhaps, in the field for this Swiss athlete. 
Now he was second out of the start shed. John Daly, the first slider, didn't make the cut. Ronnie did. First three in the draw are randomly chosen from outside the top 20 in the standings. So they're not always the fastest sliders. 487. Pretty decent getaway. Yeah. Yeah. Improves on the 492 in the first heat. So Ronnie came to play. That's what you got to do. You got to get hungry for that second heat, especially when you're back in the uh, back quarter of the field. It's a good looking run, maintaining the lead right now. He's up 1300 for the second. So he's actually extending his lead over the Chinese athlete and continues to pull away up almost two tenths of a second with the fastest speed of the heat in the Chrysler at 93.6 kilometers an hour. We got a little toe action on the exit of turn eight. And we see that in the speed. He's now in the second fastest speed. Little toes do a lot on this on this Winterberg track. Well, his first result here has been an 18th place, 17th off the first heat. We're looking at a PB. He leads. It will be a personal best in Winterberg. And whether you're first or last in the field of 30, that's the only way of judging yourself. Not what Martin Stukos or Alexander Trechikov do. It's being better than you were. And that's a PB for up a little bit. Love yes, it. Love to see the emotion. Love to see the energy. And Ronnie's one of the good guys on tour. It's great to see him have a personal best result. And personal best uh, Olympic year, that's how you want to trend. That is a good thing. Yeah. See him coming through turn nine in the fake corner 10 into 11 right here. Great bullet form. Uh, we talked about earlier some athletes with their heads up. Ronnie's head's not up. Ronnie's head is down. He's trusting it. Right, nice that, job. Right, right, right. Well, I think we may have lost Martin. So next up on the starting block, we got Craig Thompson from Great Britain. Craig is known for having huge starts. He had one of the fastest starts in the first heat. The question is, can Craig manage it down the track? 482 in heat one. Let's see what he does here. Four, seven, eight, huge start. So he also brought the heat on run two. I'd say the start ramp definitely maintained or got quicker. He's got a two tenths of a second gap on Ronald Alderset from Switzerland right now. Let's see if he can hold on to it. He's extending. He's out to three tenths of a second through that split. Well, this is exactly the opposite of what his first run was like, where the speed just fell away. Fifth best speed, that means he's the slowest so far. So the gap will come back down again. A little high on the exit eight. We see the tap going into nine. That's going to hurt. Quarter second up, but it's going to come back. He's got to be smooth here. We see the waves in turn 11. That means he's working it. He's got to relax here through turn 14 to manage it. 17 hundredths of a second. Will he hold on? Oh, it's going to be close at the line, 1,400s up, 56 one, one. so 200 quicker than Ronnie Ardestet, so he will be no worse than 16. He had 1,200s from the first heat, added just 200s more. I think he'll be happy with that, though, improving two-tenths of a second over the heat before. He had some, some small errors in the first heat that he, he cleaned up nicely here. It is so much fun to watch him start, though now that I'm not competing against him, because he's <laughs> it's just such a natural athlete on the start. But here it is, turn eight, high on the exit, comes across, taps that wall. It doesn't look like much. That is tenths, plural. You're losing energy in the sled. It's going everywhere but forward, and forward is fast. So Craig Thompson, our leader, with 15 sleds to go. Good view of all the spikes. See those needle oh, spikes. <laughs> yeah, that's how they run on ice without falling on their face, usually. Amade Banyas of Italy, 15th off the first heat, five hundredths of a second in hand over Craig Thompson and two very well matched starters. 489 in the first heat, 484. So the start ramp seems to be picking up a little bit. Great run through turn zero. Got the second fastest speed through that tricky section of the track. It is so much more difficult than it looks. These guys are making it look easy. So watching Bagnus, he's another one of these athletes. His head is buried. His eyes are up, so he can see, but his head is really low, and he is super aerodynamic down the track. 
Yeah, a little bit of toe action through turn five there. That's not gonna help. We see the sled waving a little bit. It's 5 hundredths of a second back on Thompson, but had a cleaner turn eight. Second fastest speed of the heat, 2 hundredths. Watch the numbers back into the green. Head up through turn 11, though. He's really working the sled. It's gonna be close. He's up to 5 hundredths of a second, but he needs a good turn 14, which he's getting, and he will be your new leader. Yeah, found speed at the bottom with a 56.03. Again, two tenths quicker, 22 hundredths fast than this first heat, so it does look like the track is speeding up, at least for these guys. And where did he start? 21st. So, but then Ronnie Odisette started second, so he had good ice in the first heat, and he was a couple of tenths quicker as well. So we could be getting right down towards track record pace. Turn 11, we saw the left elbow come out and the right toe come down. So that means he's really working the sled through there. Clean into turn 14, we see a little nose down skid, but that seems to be what everybody's doing. That's what the track's giving you. Solid run there. Yeah. So Amadeo Banyas makes the cut and will be no worse than 14th place, 15th place rather, 14th after first heat. The third of our Russian athletes, Vladislav Semenov. Semenov in only his fifth World Cup race, just 24 years old. So first full World Cup season for him. And his advantage, just two hundreds of a second over Banyas. 494 start in the first heat, so not as fast as his Russian counterparts. 490, so he also improves about 400 of a second, but he has a much better turn zero than he had in the first heat. A little bit of drama there in the first heat, so he's got it pointed straight, no skids in the sled, energy going forward is fast. He's back a tenth of a second though right now, and a little toe, you can't do that between four and five if you want to accelerate the sled. Just looks tentative on the sled right now. His feet are real low and a little bit wide. Small wave in Kreisel there. You do not want that. Gap extends. Uh, no, coming down. Six hundredths of a second. Second fastest speed. We'll watch those numbers come down. He's got to be smooth and relaxed. 11 through 13 here. One hundredth of a second. We got a battle. We have got a battle, second best speed, it'll be enough to take the lead by eight hundredths of a second. So the first sub 56 run, 55.97 in the second heat. And again, that was 26 hundredths quicker than his first heat. So he found a little bit more advantage over Amadeo Banyas. The difference and starting the way and he does and with use on his side, he could be a, a big name for the future for Russia. We're watching him here on the start ramp. Nice looking load, being settled on the sled. Had a drama of return zero. But down here at the bottom, he found almost a tenth of a second in the last two corners. And I think it's because he's super relaxed. Watch Amadeo, he's a little stiff on the sled we talked about, where uh, he was just super relaxed. And that's, once again, there's nothing you really see visually. You just find time in the sled. Well, this is in a tight group of five sleds covered by only seven hundredths of a second. Next up, Matt Weston of Great Britain, winner two weeks ago in Innsbruck in a three-way gold medal heat. Eighth fastest at the start, but the speed drifted away. He was only 13th at the bottom and just two hundredths of a second clear of our current leader, Vladislav Simonov. 486 in heat one, 484, so a little bit quicker as well. But it comes over and slaps that right wall out of turn zero. You can't do that. That would negate the advantage that he had off the start. So he had an 800 gap. Let's see what he does here. Okay, he made a liar. That's okay. That's all right, Matt. I thought we were friends. But extends out to 1300. So he did something right in turns uh, one and two to claw back the speed. He's extended to 1400 of a gap. Speed into the third, fastest speed. third fastest speed once again through turn nine. Nice and relaxed, head down through turn 11. That's what he's got to do. Tenth of a second, it's coming back a bit. We got a good race. Fifth fastest speed though, but I think he will hold on. He does. Not by much. He adds 200s to his previous 200s advantage. So it's a four hundredths of a second win 
over Vladislav Semenov for Matt Weston. He will be no worse than 13th place. Watching him here on the start ramp as well. Once again, a nice competitive start. Watch the left hand, only just made the saddle. Well, his season, 13th and 1st in Innsbruck, 12th last week, no worse than 13th today. That was a the, the lucky tap, Woo! I guess, on the exit Thank of turn zero. It didn't, it didn't seem to cost him, I, so that works well. Hey, if you, if you can get away with it, great for you. Now then, Kim Jisoo, 479 start in the first heat, four hundreds off the track record. We have had starts in the second heat, four hundreds quicker than the first. Is the 475 track record of Alexander Chetikov from January 2014 finally under threat? I hope so. Let's see what he's got. 176. <laughs> All right. That's close, but great start, great turn zero. So tenth of a second up and has a ton of momentum going into turn, uh, turn two there. Make that 15 hundredths of a second. In the first heat, he started 700 quicker than Matt Weston, ended up only 200 clear at the line. This group of athletes, they are so close together. Third fastest speed, 93.7 kilometers an hour. Little wave and cries. We see the elbow come out a little bit, so he is working the sled. Only the seventh fastest speed. That's indicative of working a little bit too hard. It's down to 900 of a second. He's going to run, run out of ice. He's going to drop I don't back, think he's Matt Weston. No, Weston's going to pick up a spot, oh, and he does. In fact, he drops two. They're so close. There's Katsuhiro Koshi, the former Japanese slider. Well, I wonder how many times Koshi-san has been down this track. Many, many times. So Kim ji Soo drops two spots, only seven hundredths of a second off the leader. Leaves him third with... 11 to go. Great looking start from him. That is not where the problems occurred, though. We talked Look at about all the ice halfway. coming off the grooves, though. You can see it was just a little sideways pressure. So all of that speed, some of it didn't rest with him as he got into corner zero. Yeah, we see him in the exit of turn 11 here. That little flop out, that was one of the cleaner looking runs we've seen through there. But that is the thing about Winterberg. He was cleaner looking through there than a lot of people. I think he worked too hard. He's lost right now. But when he go yeah. back, goes back and watches the video, when he sees that elbow come out a little bit and that toe drop, that's where the speed went. It's so subtle. And then, of course, Richard Bromley, the sled builder, and the coach will go, ah, OK, so that didn't work at the bottom. We'll try something different next time. Yang Wengang of China now, 17th fastest start, 11th at the bottom of the track. Let's see what he can do. 500s in hand over Matt Weston. It's down to 200 as he loads. 491, a little drift coming out of turn zero. So red numbers here, but the Chinese athlete made time down the track earlier. So he's got a 500 of a second deficit at the moment, but that bullet form, a little toe action from three to four, though. It just is a little subtle thing. Oh, little flop. Oh, he is offline a little bit, so that's not going to help. Fastest speed, though. So I'm wrong. What do I know? Why am I? Even... <laughs> I don't know. Well, the great thing is that often the athletes in the leader's box can't beat the race either. 99.3, best speed. Finally, he is in the green. He'll take the lead from Matt Weston. He will be no worse than 11th place in the race. And what's the advantage going to be at the line? 12 hundreds of a second. OK, so Matt Weston will be no worse than 12th. But Jan will be no worse than 11th. 13th here two years ago. So that's a Winterberg PB. It's only his second World Cup here. Hey, PBs are PBs. We'll take them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Matt Weston, what was his previous best here? He hasn't done a World Cup here, so that is a PB for him as well. See the little toe action through turn 11. We've seen that from a few different athletes. It seemed to work for him there. Puts himself right into the leader's box. That's where you want to be. Driving is coming on, isn't it? 
So 10 down, 10 to go. Yang Wen Jiang leads from Matt Weston and Vladislav Semenov. And we still have the owners of 14 gold medals on this track to come. Well, I always think, Greg, although they're very different beasts, that there's so much similarity between Innsbruck and Winterberg. They are just so subtle in, in what the athletes have to do. You have to be so quiet that the tiniest mistakes just have a massive effect. Yeah, once again, it's one of those things where you, the, the most subtle movements on the sled are what matter the most, especially through the middle and the bottom of this track. The, the little bit of an elbow out, a little bit of a toe drag, things like that. It's hard to pick up unless you know specifically what you're looking for. The, the big thing you can, if you listen, is those little scrapes. When you hear those little scraping sounds, you don't see the athlete moving a lot. But what, what that is, is just a little toe drag that's slowing the sled down. They're trying to turn it a little more aggressively. That's a, a little bit of a panic move. And uh, that's the things you see in Winterberg and Eagles that really make the big difference. There's a good souvenir. Yeah, nice, 22. So that's Yang Wen Gang, our current leader. As uh, you don't need the vest, you'll get a different one next week because you'll have a different start number. So it uh, might take five minutes. But And you can see this, this young lad in his outdoor clothing. You can see how tightly this... That's not what they look like when they're given to you. You have to spend time in the evening stitching it up so it's skin tight. I don't miss that. Yeah. Yeah, needlework. Hey. Who knew that, that as an Olympic winter sports athlete, needlework would be one of your biggest friends? Uh, I used to pay Kendall Wessenberg and Haribo gummy bears to sew my bib for me. <laughs> Worth every mouthful, absolutely. Well, there's absolutely. Matt Weston. And uh, nice to see fans at the track here as well, friends and family here watching. It's a, a great little online video. If you want to know how much it means to the families, check out on the IBSF uh, website and see the video of his folks. Winterberg, Germany, race four of the BMW IBSF Men's Skeleton World Cup. Half the field is done as we get to our top 10. Starting off with, hang on a minute, Sung Bin Young, a two-time winner on this track. What's the Olympic champion doing back in 10th place, Greg West? Well, look, he had a really nice start in the first heat, does it again with a 484. What I hypothesized that word uh, during the first heat, though, is they missed on the sled setup because he had a nice looking run and there was no major dramas, but just did not have the speed. Now he's up 18 hundredths of a second right now, but I don't think uh, Yoon is looking backward. I think Yoon is looking forward and wants to get up closer to the medals and he's maintaining that 18, 18 hundredths of a second uh, gap over the Chinese athlete right now. He had 600 in hand from the first heat. You're absolutely right, a, a multiple medalist here. He's had three medals in his last three outings. Shouldn't be this far back. No speed in the sled again. He's actually Ooh. falling back. Only the seventh fastest speed of the heat through turn 14. Oh, oh, oh doesn't, doesn't lose, doesn't win. He ties. So that means Jan will be no worse than 10th. So that will be a PB here again. His previous best here, Jan, was 13th. Previous best for Sun Bin Young, two wins and a bronze medal. Don't see him making the podium here today, I'm afraid. But again, it's all about learning, working out what works with the sled and the athlete this year, and trying to build that performance for Beijing, the big one. Yeah, it is all about learning. He's also given away his pen. All right, well, this is now a thing. Jan has started a trend. <laughs> it's like the Steve yeah. Holcomb high five lion in Koenigsegg. Eh? Now, suddenly, everybody needs to do it. Next up, Thomas Dukors of Latvia in ninth place after the first heat. Five hundredths of a second ahead of Sun Bin Yun. Is yeah, that Thomas not with the sled? That is Googie with a sled. He's coaching yeah. the Latvians now. Yeah, yeah. No, the Latvians and the Austrians have worked together for several years, and they're kind of joint building the sleds as well. There's a new sled program. Yeah, I believe this is a, a, a Googie sled. So we'll see what Thomas can do here. 492. So he improves by a hundredth of a second over his first heat. Something we expect from anybody with the last name Dukers, though, is to put on a clinic going down the track. 
Thomas has been doing this longer than uh, some athletes, I think, in the field have been alive or close to it. Martin, you probably have a stat on that, I'm sure, sitting there somewhere. The 137th at World Cup, his 17th on this track. The last family one, too, by the way, was only back in the 2016-17 season. So it's been a while. He's up 2,300, so he's got a quarter second in the bank. Fastest speed of the heat, that is not surprising. Good looking run through the bottom of the track. I mean, he's done this so many times. Two tenths, so it's coming back a bit. Only did fifth fastest speed through turn 14. That'll be enough to hold the lead. Wow. Oh, but not by much. Wow. He had 500s from the first heat. Adds another four in the second heat over Sunday Yun. Well, in February, that might be a really important slide, but here in Winterberg, it's again, like the Koreans, the Latvians will absolutely be testing equipment, set up runners, working on this, that, and the other. Don't forget the mask. <laughs> if you're a young slider watching this broadcast, just watch him right now. You can't ask for much more through turn 11. A little input there with the knee, you can barely see it, even if you're looking for it. That was the cool thing about watching the Dukers, is you don't know when they're steering. That is the goal. A little flop out yeah. of turn 13, to be expected. A good looking run, and once again, he's required to take <laughs> off his bid. <laughs> Well, now, how many kids have we got and how many more athletes remain? Only eight left. And our eighth starter was Martin Stukors. Martin's an eight-time winner on this track, including the World Championships here in 2015. Let's see what Martin's can do here. Superman, 487 in the first heat, 485 in the second. Less drama, though. He had a little, little bit of trouble uh, in the first heat on corner zero. So that should help him extend the lead a little bit over his brother. 16 hundredths of a second in the bank as he goes to turn three. Well, seven of his 58 World Cup wins have come on this track. I don't think he's going to add an eighth win here today, but can he turn around the form of the first heat? Like his brother, he lost lots of speed below the Chrysler in the first run. Cleaner from uh, eight to nine, though. Fastest speed of the heat. We hear the helmet scraping on the ice. The big pressure of turn uh, nine. A little bit of a wave in 11, though. 1,500 to the second. He will be the lead, but only the fifth fastest speed. Once again, some people have missed on setup today. All right, but he is in this group of sleds from, uh, from the silver medal down to Thomas in eighth covered by three tenths of a second. Now, I'm not sure that's gonna be a medal today, but it could see him move up. Yeah, that's what he's going to be looking to do. See him here, turn zero much better than the first run. The first run, he had a little bit of skid and clipped the wall this time. It gets real close to it, but kind of bananas or wills the sled away from the wall. Mm. See him in turn 11, a little dip there in the middle. But, I mean, just perfect bullet form. Even when he's high there at the top of the pressure, he seriously doesn't have a bib on anymore after that. Yep. Well, he's handed it to some lucky young lad. Next up, the hometown hero, Alexander Gassner, slides for BSC Winterberg. That's the local bobsleigh skeleton club. Christian Balder, the head coach of the German skeleton team with the sled and all these Athlete sliding now on FES sleds. Oh, so what can Gassner produce? Well, he produced a bronze medal here last year, a silver medal the year before. And the 20th fastest start in heat one, 12th fastest in heat two with a 493. So that, that does help his cause a bit. Yep. Looking to move up in front of the hometown crowd before the Olympics. He was 100 ahead of Martin Stukers from the first heat many years here in the last 15. That would have left you as the winner. <laughs> well, he's up 800, he's down to 500, so he's bringing it back. Fastest speed of the heat so far in the Chrysler, 94.5 kilometers an hour. If he's clean eight to nine, he might be able to bring it back even. Little tap though, fastest speed, but that tap's gonna hurt him. 300ths of a second, so he's not gonna gap as much as I think he would be hoping. 
It's going to be very close here to the bottom of the track. 300s he's maintaining. Super close. He was 200s ahead from the first heat. Will he match the... No, he doesn't. Doesn't match the Latvian. So Martin Stukas stays in the leader's box. 300 slower in that heat. And he comes in behind. So Alexander Gassner slips one. And Martin Stukas remains narrowly in the lead. Now, in the women's race later today, Greg, we're going to see that Tina Herman, Jacqueline Lurling, the hometown queen, start much slower than the fastest starters, like Elena Nikitina. But they can build a lot more speed lower down. Looks like that has just eluded Gassner here today. Tell he's not happy. He always hates no. seeing that number two on the board whenever you come up in front of the hometown yeah. crowd. But I don't think these kids are going to try to steal his bib care. Yeah, no, exactly right. Yellow vest of our World Cup points leader, Christopher Grothair. Well, what a couple of years he's had in terms of results in Altenberg. Two consecutive world championships. And when he won the second of those in February, he had only ever won one World Cup race. Two weeks ago in Innsbruck, he added a second World Cup gold. He's still got half a dozen medals in his career. Is he going to add to them today? He needs a huge run to do so. 488, so a little faster than the 491 in the first heat. Fourth fastest velocity of the heat. That uh, He's going to have a chance here to get a good start. Obviously knows the track well. Already down to 200 of a second deficit. And closing on the Latvian. Nice looking run to the top third of the track. Both are putting on a clinic at top right now. Maintaining it 200 of a second though. Only the third fastest speed through Kreisel, 94.2 kilometers an hour. I've got to say, I've never seen him smile quite as much. I've never seen him slide as well as he is this year. What a time to be doing it as well for Christopher Rohrer. Hear how quiet he is through turn 11. No dragging oh. to the face for the feet. He's got up and by a hundredth of a second. It's going to be close here at the line. It is. Extend. 55-7-0. Well, that would have left him third in the first heat. The question is, how much more pace can the remaining five athletes find? Well, that's, a, that's a run. And that's going to be... It's, it's so tight from third back to him right now. I think that gives him a chance to slip up into the medals. He definitely threw down the gauntlet. Nice looking start time, getting back in the 80s. It's very important on this track. It is, once again, the, the, the pace of the field on the start ramp has just gotten better and better and better uh, throughout this entire quad. It's amazing how quiet he was through turn 11. No dragging of the face or the feet. And that just allows the sled to accelerate. So Christopher Grote here, the leader, with five sleds to go here in Winterberg. Two weeks ago, Gung Wen Chang of China was part of a doubly historic gold medal rush in Innsbruck, not just a three-way tie for gold, which we've never seen in the sport before, but a first ever gold for China in ice sliding. Now, can he put himself in the medals here again? The answer is yes, he can. The question is, will he? A little bit of a drama, though, in corner zero. He really had to work it. We saw him drop the toe. He dropped the toe again on the exit of turn two, and toes again, three to four. That is not going to help him move up. Mr. Goat there is in the, in the leader's box smiling. He loves seeing toes. Two tenths of a second back, only the sixth fastest speed going through Chrysler. He only had the 14th fastest start velocity. That is not going to help. He needs exactly what he just did, the fastest speed to the bottom of the hill. He's got to do that if he has any chance of catching Goat there, but the damage has been done. Yeah, he was only 700s out of a medal in the first heat, but he's wild at the bottom of the speed. He's all gone away. He's going to sink half a dozen spots. Fifth place at the line with a 56.06, slower than his first heat. And I think that is the first man who has not gone down quicker. It just all came unraveled almost from the start. That was such a, it was a tale of like not two runs, but three runs. We see him here, corner zero. 
a little bit abrupt. He's willing the sled away. There's a little bit of a skid. He reaches out and kicks the wall. Then the left toe comes down. These are little things. I get that they're little things, but they add up. We see exit turn two here. A little toe again. He's pointed the wrong way. He pointed down away from the corner and then dragging the toe from three to four where you want to build speed. You're actually slowing the sled. You just cannot do that, especially when you're fighting for the medals. So what happened there? He needed a few more hundreds. Did he just go a little more aggressive on the setup to make it looser and faster? Well, one away from the medals, four hundreds out of bronze for Sung Sungi Jung of Korea. This could be a massive, massive moment for Jung. Second World Cup race here. He was here two years ago finished in ninth, so this is going to be an epic PB if he holds his spot, 4.85. 4.85, little skid on the exit, it's corner zero. But good news for the Korean athlete, the sun came out. And not just because it's a nicer day, that's going to actually help. It doesn't take long for a little bit of what we call a sun spritz to maybe speed up the track, so that will work in his favor. That little toe right there, though, is not going to work in his favor. We have a race on our hands, one hundredth of a second. And look at the speed, woeful speed, and maybe that sun spritz will help the last three sliders. It's not helping Chuck, 17th speed. Grote hair is no. going to lead at the end of this. The question now is, where does the free fall down the leaderboard end? Oh, oh and a big hit. Help. Previous best was ninth as he comes across the line. He's eighth with three to go. Christopher Grote hair leads. Absolute disaster there. Yeah. Well, it's come unstitched in a huge way for Gung of China and Jung of Korea. And Grote Hair, so consistent this season, leads with three to go. Uh, there was so much potential early. He had the lead. Good looking start. Once again, you're in the mid 480s. Can't ask for much more than that. But we just saw once again, I think they were, we talked about the Bromleys might have guessed a little wrong on the setup. And they, I think they went for it by turning the rock up or something to the second heat. And we saw a wall that going into 14. And that's just pulled the parachute at that point. Three to go in Winterberg. Christopher Grothair leads. His only medal on this track came in 2012 13, eight years ago. Nikita Tregobov, well, he has not had a medal on this track. His very best has been a fourth place finish last year. Is the Russian going to finish in the medals? He was third off the first heat. His advantage is 900. Make that 12 now. The looking start 487, 485, so improves on the 487, holds the lead through turn one and two. And actually is extending out to almost a tenth of a second on the exit of turn three. What we're seeing here, though, is confidence. You're not seeing the toes dance. I say that he drops the toe. Yeah, the there you go. <laughs> Commentator curse. So third fastest speed of the heat going through Chrysler, but for the most part, we're seeing more confidence out of Treggy Bob. Uh, compared to the athlete before, not yeah, seeing the stress, hearing the scratching, and, and losing the speed down the hill. Just about stopped the rot. He's gone from 1200s at the start down to 500s, up to six, down to 300s. Fourth best speed. Is that enough? Do we have a tie at the line? He's behind. Oh, wow. He's in the again. Growth here found that time warp in turn 14 and just pulled away from everybody. That is German muscle memory on this track. They know where you have to be smooth, and they remember it, and they repeat it. Out of the medals again, potentially, well, definitely is uh, Nikita Tregobov. He drops down to fourth place with two to go. We said that it was going to be snakes and ladders from third back to eighth, and that pretty much yeah. is what just happened. Such a tight yep. race between that group. See, exit turn 13, little clip going into the wall. I think Growth Hair just figured out a way to slip through there and maintain speed a little better than everybody else. And it's so steep uphill at that point that if you carry more speed in, you're going to carry more speed out. Axel Junk, 
Two sleds to go. He's 27 hundreds up on Christopher Grote here, but his eyes are on the main prize. He's been a medalist on this track, silver behind Alexander Chechikov three years ago. Silver with Alexander Chechikov behind Martin Stukors in 2016. He was a bronze medalist two years ago. Can he take the gold medal here today? And the 17th fastest start in the first heat, 10th fastest wow. in the second. Comes over though and gets close to that wall. Only the Seven hundredths of a second speed. quicker. That's a big start. We'll see what he can do here. Extends out. He's got three tenths on his teammate right now. He has an opportunity here to not only maybe grab a silver medal, but does he challenge Trechikov for the win? Three tenths up, fastest speed of the heat going through Kreisel. 12 years since the German man has won in World Cup on this track. Best speed of the lot, 3,500 up. It's about beating Trechikov. He's got to be perfect. He is looking forward, still extending out 3,500. Only the sixth fastest speed through turn 14. At the line, 55-67. That's exactly what he did in the first heat. Sun is out now. I think he's got that cool chrome visor. Let's see. Yeah. That was a great looking run. He was not looking to protect, he was looking to attack. And he's, that, that puts a little bit of pressure, I think, on Trechikov. He must execute here. Axel really putting pressure on for the win. Improves in the start, 8 hundredths of a second. Can't ask for much more than that. But then that German speed down the track, just excellent work, especially through the middle where we've seen some athletes struggle. He just put on a clinic on how to build it. High sliding zone, Freddie Mercury is our race leader. Alexander Chechikov, the final slider. A winner here in 2006, a winner here in 2018, a winner here in 2020. Does he add a fourth victory in Winterberg to his CV? European Championship here, he won it last year. 21 World Cup wins. He's looking for win number 22 today. 482 in the first heat, 481 improves. So that gives him 1800s in the bag. Great looking run through corner zero. So this, this is come his down to lose to speed. Speed in the final turn could win or lose it for Tretikov. How close will it get? Check the next time split. He was up 2300s, 2200s, so it slips back a little bit, but not a lot. Fourth fastest speed through Kreisel. Now, Junk, has, Junk was the fastest through the middle of the track, but was only six fastest the clock. Maintained Ooh. fastest through turn nine, 2200s. Yep. I think it's his. I think it is. Same speed as Axel Junk there, and he continues with that advantage over two tenths clear. Alexander Tretikov, the fastest of all. It is his 22nd career win and a new track record. That just adds to the victory one hundredth of a second quicker than the record set by Martin Stukors in the World Championships here in 2015. A new track record and a victory here. That's his third win in four races on this track, Alexander Chechikov. Sun came out. <laughs> yeah. It adds a little wow. bit of speed. Knew that it was going to play a part, but I mean, once again, great start, great drive, good equipment. That's the trifecta, and uh, yeah, Trechikov does a great job getting the W. Big start, as always, from Alexander Trechikov from 2004 when he finished in 34th place. The next time he raced here in 2006, he was the winner. And he then had a long 10-year wait, 12-year wait for win number two. Win number three last year, win number four here this weekend. So Alexander Chechikov, his 22nd career win, his fourth here now in Winterberg. Axel Young takes second, Christopher Groh here third, Martin Stukors off the podium for only the third time in 17 races here. 
And that is the rest of the top 20. Well, it gives us an indication of what we might expect in the women's race, which comes up this afternoon. Maybe some blue sky. And again, we may see the track record coming under threat. But there is your race winner, Alexander Chechikov. And he's having a pretty decent season so far this year, Alexander Chetikov, winner of the first race in Innsbruck. And he wins our first trip of two to Winterberg. And skeleton competition remains firmly alight. Christopher Grote here. Well, talk about consistency. Another podium finish for the double world champion. He leads from Axel Jung. Chetikov closing fast on the rails ahead of Martins Ducours. Now you can see the rest of our points scorers in the top 20. Olympic champion Sun Bin Jung down in 12th position. Definitely need to answer a few more of their questions before we get into the second half of the year. This is the fourth of our eight World Cup races and the fourth of five before the Christmas break. We don't have a New Year break. We'll be racing New Year's weekend as well as we rush to get everything sorted for selections before the Olympic Games, which start early February in Beijing. And the action starts on the Beijing track with Luge, and then Skeleton and Bob Slade take their turn. Well, that is it for the men's competition here in Winterberg. Alexander Chechikov, the winner again. If Christopher Grote here is having a fine season, so too is the 2014 Olympic champion having a very strong year. Well, we'll be back with the women's skeleton competition at 2.30 local, 13.30 GMT. That is 08.30 Eastern, wherever you are. Join Greg West, me, Martin Hayden, and the IBS TV crew for all the action. Until then, thanks for being with us. We'll see you later. Bye for now.